because Bitcoin's ledger, its blockchain transaction history is all online, you can collect a lot of statistics that are interesting that help you to evaluate the economy in a different way uh, than you might be able to with the traditional uh, currency that included a lot of um, cash transactions or transactions that for whatever reason aren't centralized and you can't see. So although they're anonymous, they are centralized in the blockchain and so you can see them. So I just want to walk through and show you a few of these things that are available. Uh, the website blockchain.info has collected a bunch of them. So we can go over here and take a look at what some of them are. Uh, I'm just going to walk through a bunch of these here. You can see, uh, first of all, some of the most popular addresses to which uh, Bitcoins are being sent. A lot of them you see are listed here as Satoshi Dice. Satoshi Dice is a um, is uh, an organization that allows you to gamble using Bitcoin. You send Satoshi Dice some uh, Bitcoin and it will roll some virtual dice for you and send you back your winnings if you win or not if you lose. And what's interesting about Satoshi Dice is all the odds are completely verifiable because you can see who won and who lost just based on the transaction chain. So that's the most, some of the most popular addresses. Uh, the fourth one here is a, a mining pool, so a collaborative group of people that are mining together, deep bit. Uh, it's interesting to see here, this is a list of all the attempts to spend, uh, to do double spends on a given Bitcoin rights uh, in the last uh, 500,000 transactions. And you can see, um, actually, there, there haven't been any. Um, and so that reflects the fact that people aren't trying very hard in order to break uh, the the cryptography or to break the algorithm for Bitcoin because no one's really trying to double spend. Of course, the point at which someone would try and double spend, it would probably be a massive attack on the network. Um, okay, the next one is the hash rate distribution. So this is interesting for those of you that are following the uh, interest about the 51% attack. This is a pie, pie chart that shows all the different mining organizations that are collaborating in order to close the blocks. The biggest one here is ghio, and briefly, uh, they were over 51% of the um, were closing over 51% of the blocks, uh, and that that scared people for a little bit actually or a couple weeks ago. Um, and then you've got a whole bunch of other mining pools that are listed here. Um, uh, they all have various advantages, and you will pay off in different ways. Um, so that's a list of what are the mining pools that are closing the blocks most frequently. Um, Bitcoin.chain has this ability, though. although we talk about Bitcoin being anonymous, they actually give you the ability to reveal who you are if you want to specify what address, uh, an address on the blockchain that you use repeatedly and you want to give it a tag uh, to describe it and perhaps a web page that's associated with it and then you can digitally sign it to indicate that you actually want, are the ones that are the one, is the one that have, you are the one who has rights to this address. So it may be valuable if you're a company uh, and you want to accept Bitcoin transactions to actually guarantee that you are who you say you are. So you can do that on blockchain info only. That's not blockchain wide. That's just um, uh, that's just something that is uh, used on blockchain.info to um, uh, replace the addresses with a name. Uh, this is the total number of Bitcoins in circulation. Uh, it looks like it's pretty linear, but if you um, scan out, uh, you you can see that over time, go to all time, well it doesn't show it very well, but what it, um, what you should be seeing here if, as the graph expands, I guess it still looks kind of linear, is that over time it's going to cap out and that cap is going to be up at 21 million. So the graph doesn't show it very clearly, but that's kind of where it's going. All right, the next graph you see is the market capitalization. And so what that reflects is it reflects a combination of the number of Bitcoins that are in circulation against the value of the Bitcoins in US dollars. So you can see that there's a moment in December 2013 uh, when the values of Bitcoin was very high in comparison to the amount that were in circulation. The value of the Bitcoin dropped even though the number of Bitcoins was increasing, the amount that it was dropping in value was decreasing faster. And it's coming up in a little rise here more recently. That's an interesting chart to calculate. Um, this is one that shows the total transaction fees. So this is the extra fees that are added in addition to the rewards um, over, and this is, um, I'm not sure what it's aggregated over, seven day average. So an average over seven days, what are the fees that are being um, collected by the miners? Here we have the number of transactions per day. 
um, the seven day average. So you can see that the transactions have this, uh, uh, this pattern, uh, which almost certainly is a weekly pattern uh, in which you get more transactions at um, recurrent cyclical patterns of the week. And then there's sort of this regular up and down um, flow that goes on. Here's a statistic, um, sorry. Um, here are the number of transactions per block. So we know that a block can close very quickly. And if a block closes very quickly, it's likely to have less translations. If it takes a long time for a block to close, it's more likely that it'll have more transactions. And you can see that the number of transactions per block tends to vary from about 200 to 600, depending on which block. Um, this is the number of orphaned blocks. That um, This is the number of blocks that, for whom a nonce has been calculated, but which doesn't get incorporated into the blockchain because a different um, block that has had it, a nonce calculated has gotten incorporated into the blockchain instead. And so any transactions that were validated in this orphan block uh, get, get killed. And so this sort of represents how much wasted effort there is. Um, and you can see very few blocks um, like one and, and three, very few blocks get calculated that don't get incorporated into the blockchain. Um, this is the estimated transaction volume. So this is the number of Bitcoins that are um, being transacted through the blockchain on a seven day average. Uh, this is estimated because this estimation attempts to remove the transactions that are associated with change, uh, with giving change back to the original sender. And you can see that the amount of Bitcoin that is um, being transacted also kind of has this weekly periodicity um, and it's you know more or less been pretty steady for a while uh, with some particular peaks uh, usually those are associated with public knowledge about Bitcoin leaking into the popular press. Um, this is the market price of Bitcoins in US dollars you can see for a long time the price per Bitcoin was under 200 it peaked as high as 1200 just under 1200 and is now in the range of 600 more recently price of bitcoins for dollars. Okay, this is the hash rate. So this is the um, uh, number of attempts at trying to solve uh, the nonce uh, that are happening per second. And you can see that the number of attempts of trying to solve uh, the nonce for closing a block is going up and it almost looks like it's going up exponentially. Um, and that's associated with the introduction of application-specific integrated circuits into the mining operations. Finally, you can see the difficulty. The difficulty is um, going up periodically every two weeks as the algorithm reevaluates what the difficulty has been um, over the last two weeks. And as more and more miners come online, it becomes necessary to increase the difficulty of mining the block so that the average block closure happens every 10 minutes. So the difficulty is going up. This would start coming down again if for some reason people stopped mining the blocks and the difficulty needed to be lowered in order to keep the average at 10 minutes. This uh, chart represents the average amount of time that it takes in order to close a block. So how long does it take from the time you put your transaction on the network to the time uh, in which it's incorporated into a block. And you can see that uh, the goal is to uh, hit at about 10 minutes. Uh, the difficulty always lags behind a little bit, the technology that's being used to um, close the blocks. And so sometimes it peaks as high as 20 minutes and then some other times it's down as low as five minutes. So that's how long it takes for a, tr for a single confirmation, uh, meaning that a block is closed that has your transaction in it. Okay, so that's just some of the many trans many statistics that can be collected about a blockchain. Uh, there are similar statistics that have been co connect collected about the network effects and looking at the different ways in which Bitcoin flows through the network, and those are interesting too. Maybe you'll be able to come up with some interesting way of visualizing um, Bitcoin economy and just do an analysis of the database, which is available uh, when you download the client, uh, and come up with some interesting insights about the way this new economy is working. Thanks.